Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. Now, I just had a very odd experience. Um, I We were sent this puzzle by the brilliant constructor name Chaos is Inevitable. It's called P is for Prime. Um, and I had copied... He sent it to us... I'm not guessing he... He sent it to us in F Puzzles. Um, and at the moment, I can't just transfer that into our software. So I copied it into the software and I copied the rule set in and I was just adjusting... I mean, I was, was going to solve the puzzle based on the rule set. I thought I'd understood the rules. And at the very end of the rules, it defined prime numbers. And I suddenly noticed as I had, as I was just about to hit record, that this puzzle defines one as a prime number. Now, mathematicians, just switch off. You won't be able to, you won't be able to handle what we're going to go through today. Um, but I don't know whether chaos is inevitable believes that one is definitely a prime number. I mean, there is sometimes debate about whether one is a prime number, but I think we've established, even on the channel before, that all mathematicians agree that one is not a prime number. And any puzzle we've done before featuring the primes uses two, three, five, and seven as the Sudoku primes and not one. In this puzzle, one counts as prime. So, intriguing. Basically, we're defining a new, a new set of digits. Or, well, no, because there may be bigger, bigger numbers than seven involved in the primes anyway. Mathematicians, you have been warned. Um, I was very amused anyway when having, having sort of suddenly panicked as I was about to hit the go button. But I'm going to do the puzzle anyway and see if we can get through it um, with me trying to remember that one does count as prime in this puzzle. Because I've, I mean, I, re I remember not being sure early on when I was doing maths whether one was prime because it divides, you know, it's very a primal element, if you like, but... I believe, and mathematicians can confirm something about this, you know, somebody will post what they consider to be a proof or something, but um, I think it is just by definition, it is generally accepted in the world of maths that one is not prime. But in this puzzle it is, and therefore chaos is inevitable. Um, I will do the rules in a moment. Don't forget, you've still got time to enter the competition on Patreon, the um, CTC Snake Egg Collection by... Glum Hippo, it is absolutely brilliant. A sort of puzzle hunt and Sudoku hunt. Um, several puzzles. You will understand a lot more about snake egg patterns by the end. Guaranteed. Um, and also, there's other stuff on Patreon. There's all of our apps on the links under the video. And Sven Sudoku Bed and our merch. And it's all great stuff. But the first link is to this puzzle. P is for Prime. And I have added into the rule set so that it's in caps, that in this puzzle one counts as prime. I'm sorry, I'm still going to stop laughing about that. I'm certainly not laughing at Chaos as Inevitable. This is how they have chosen to present this puzzle, and it's their puzzle, it's not mine. Normal Sudoku rules apply. So one to nine goes in every row, every column, and every box. Um, adjacent digits on the red line differ by at least five. So that's exactly the same as a German whisper rule. But the line has more to it, so it's not green. Um, the amount of time, here it comes, the amount of times a number is shown on the red line must be a prime number. So that's a bit like counting circles. Um, yeah, okay, I don't really know what it means for solving the puzzle, but if there is an 8 on the line, the number of times that that 8 appears is a prime number, which in this puzzle could be 1 time, 2 times, 3 times, or 3 five times. In fact, the line goes through seven boxes, so it could even be seven times, I reckon. Actually, it goes through eight boxes, but that eight is not a prime, so that number doesn't come into the equation for that purpose. Digits cannot repeat in a cage. I don't think they could by Sudoku rules anyway, in any of those cages. A cage either contains only prime numbers or no prime numbers. But if it contains no prime numbers, it sums to a prime number. And if it contains only prime numbers, then it doesn't sum to a prime number. So in a way, so the way the rules are stated, a cage contains 
either only prime numbers or no prime numbers but summing to a prime number and either one of these rules is true for a cage, never both. So for example, two and five in a two cell cage is not possible since the numbers are both prime and it sums to a prime. And the main rule for me, in this puzzle, one counts as prime. So we get a big P, the puzzle's called P is for prime. Give it a try on that link under the video. Um, I've said far too many times now, remember that one counts as a prime in this puzzle. It's mostly for myself. I'm gonna try the puzzle now let's get cracking. So I think that we can start in column three. Now this this line acts as a normal German whisper line and the three things we know about German whispers are as follows. Five can never appear on the line because there is no Sudoku neighbor that could sit next to it. The numbers on the line must alternate between higher than five and lower than five to maintain that difference and four and six can never appear anywhere where they had two neighbors that can see each other in Sudoku terms. So that can't be four because those would both have to be a nine neighbor. Now what that means is that this column is very tractable. Five can be placed immediately off the line. The only places for four and six are at the two ends. Um, they have to sit next to 1 and 9 on both sides of them. And now, it is definitely true that these are a 2-8 pair and these are a 3-7 pair. How do I demonstrate that proof? Um, and I forget this. Okay, the thing I'm going to do is to colour the line in alternating cells. And that's because of this alternation rule. We alternate between high and low digits along the line to maintain this five difference. And I don't know whether green is high and purple is low or vice versa, but it's one way round. Now, the reason I've done that is to consider, obviously in this column, we've used up one, four, five, six, nine. These cells are all from two, three, seven, eight. If you were to put a three here, that would be low. These two would be the high digits, seven and eight, but that would mean that three was touching seven on one side or the other. And that's not allowed because that difference is not enough. So three can't be in either of those cells for that reason and neither can seven for the same reason using the other polarity. So those are a two eight pair and these are a three seven pair, which was what I wanted to demonstrate. And after that, I don't know what to do. Okay, we've got this four cell cage here. Now that's either going to take can contain the four. Let's just make a little aid memoir of the, the groups of digits. So the prime set we're calling one, two, three, five, seven. The non-prime set of four, six, eight, nine. So if this is non-primes, they're nine, eight, six, four. That adds up to 27. And that's not possible because the non-prime set, any non-prime, any cage made up of non-primes has to add up to a prime number. And that doesn't. 27 is 3 times 9. You know that. It's also 3 cubed. It's not prime. So this cage is made up of prime digits. We select it from 1, 2, 3, 5, 7, 9. This cage, there aren't, not 9, 1, 2, 3, 5, 7. This cage, there aren't enough non-prime, sorry, there aren't enough primes left over from this cage to fill it. So it's non-primes adding up to a prime number. Now, 9, 8, 6 is fine. That makes 23. 984 makes 21, that's not prime. 964 is fine, that makes 19. And 864 is obviously even and not prime. So 9 is in this cage. And what was the other one that couldn't be done? 984 is not allowable, so 6 is in the cage as well. Um, this is just aid memoir in the yellow. I'm, I might keep that in hand. Um, now, that means that I don't know what these two digits are at all. One of them is 4 or 8, and the other one... Oh, and of course, these have to add up to a non-prime number. That's probably not going to be hard to do. The total of those potential digits is 18. If you take out... Okay, so you can't take out 1 
because they'd add up to 17, and that would be primes adding up to a prime, which is not allowed. And you can't take out 7, because that would add up to 11. So 1 and 7 are definitely in this cage. That can't be a 5, because it's on the line. Now, I was going to try this cage next. Now, in theory, ab origine, 1, 2, 3, 7, 8, 9 are all possible here. 4 and 6 are not, because the neighbours see each other. Um, this always reminds me of neighbours peeking out from neck curtains, having a look across the road at each other, but anyway. So, 1 could go with 7, 8 or 9. 1 and 7 are from the same set. So that's possible, and they would add up to 8, which would also be... Yeah, which would be two primes adding up to not prime. So that's fine. One and eight are not from the same set, and one and nine are not from the same set. So that's not possible. Nine and one are not from the same set, and nine and three are not from the same set. Nine and two... Oh, they're not from the same set either. So it doesn't matter what they add up to. So this is a seven and a one. They're just done. And that resolves... The polarity, green becomes low, and I'm going to recolour it blue. Purple becomes high, and I'm going to recolour it orange. And now I can fill in the whole of column three. This must be right. OK, well, that's a good start. This has got to be a two. Seven can only touch one or two. This is eight or nine now. Now, maybe that is why that's the only cage on the red line, because it's the only one that's going to really give us a big head start. Interesting. Very unexpected. How that unwound for me. Maybe you expected it. I didn't. This is low, but I don't have any... Well, it can't be four, because its neighbours are in the same box. And this one has neighbours in the same column. This one now... Well, I have to write 1, 2, 3, or 4. No, I don't have to write 4, because now I've ruled out... This, this, the highest digit this can be is 7. So I don't think this can be 3 or 4, or there's no way to connect it to that. So, this is 1 or 2. This is now a set of 1, 2... In fact, 1 is in that cage due to the count we did earlier. Excellent. I'm, I'm leaving those there as long as I can get away with that. So that is a 2. And 2 is not in this cage now, which is 1, 3, 5, 7, adding up to 16, which is good. That is a composite number. This digit is 4 or 8. Oh, it's seeing an 8. Bingo. That's 4. And now 4 comes out of this cage, which adds up to 23, which is prime, which is fine. Now remember, these are just eight memoirs. They're not doing anything, anything clever or naughty. Now, this can't be a seven. It's not allowed to be a six because of the neighbor's situation. That is eight or nine, and that forms a triple. So six is in one of those cells and not there. These are low. This one can't be four. So that's one or three. Oh, and this is high. I've got this marked as high. How long have I had this marked as high and I haven't removed... One and three as candidates. That can't sit next to three. This is now three or four. And these are five and the other digit from three or four. Okay, we've got a lot of the line done now. This is one, two or three because it's seeing a four. Yeah, now I have to focus on the cages. So, or can I do Sudoku? I'd much rather be doing some Sudoku than working out all the possibilities for any of these cages. So let's get rid of those now because they might get in the way if I'm going to do Sudoku. There's a two in one of those cells. There's a seven in one of those two. I mean, I'm imagining this three cell cage is where we're going next. Ah, actually, now we've removed one and two from the column. The only way that could be three odd digits, sorry, three 
prime digits is if it was 357 which would be fine. They add up to a non-prime 15. So it's possible for that to be 357 and for this to be made up out of the digits 4, 6, 8, 9. Now, we worked out, I think, when we were looking at this, that there are two ways to make up a three-cell cage to, a, to add to a non-prime, no, to add to a prime number out of 4, 6, 8, 9. One was the eventual result here, 986. The other one, I seem to remember, added up to, well, it left out 8. It was 964, which adds up to 17. So there is a 9 in this cage, and we know exactly where it is. Oh, no, 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 no. If, if, if this is made up of non-primes, the 9 is here. And there is also a 6 in the cage in one of these cells along with 8 or 4. So that is possible. 9 there. But if this is a 357 set, do I know the order? I don't think I do. So these are from 357 or they're... Oh, bother, did I have those highlighted at that time? Sorry, I did. Or they are 986 or 98... No. 964 or 968. That's it. Oh, that's not quite as useful as I'd hoped. I'm going to have to think about these. So this... Okay, this cage, if that's 357, we're selecting two from here, from 9864, to make a prime number. So we're going to have to have the odd nine in it, along with either four or eight. Well, that's easily done. So if this is 986, then we don't have enough non-primes. We would have to select two primes from 357 that make a non-prime number, well, any pair of those would... Ah, seven cannot be in these cells by Sudoku. Oh, that's interesting. So either seven is in this cage, in a 357 cage, or it's here. Seven would have to go with something from one, two, three, five. I don't know. I think it can. I don't see why not. Ah, oh, I'm a bit stuck now. I've, I've messed up some of these. I must have had too many cells coloured or highlighted when I was writing some digits in. That can't be 7. That's 8 or 9. This is 7, 8 or 9. OK, that's right. 5172. OK, this can't have a 6 in it. So we're selecting from 3, 4, 8, 9. Well, we can't have a 3 in it, because there would be no other prime for it to go with. So now we're selecting from 4, 8, 9. And we need to come up, sum up to a prime number. So we need the 9 to make it viable as an odd number. So that's 8. And now this is a 9, 4 pair. OK, good. That was where we went. So we've got 3, 6 there. This cell becomes a 1. We've got a 6x wing between there and there. So 6 is going to be in one of these cells. 49561. Now, here we're selecting from 2378. 8 doesn't have a non-prime partner. So we are selecting from 237. And we must add up to a non-prime. So it's not 23, which adds up to a prime. It could be 2, 7 or 3, 7. So there's a 7 in it. And therefore, here we're selecting from 2, 3, 8. And there's an 8 in it. And that is not 8. Which I could have got from that. Never mind. 8, 3, 6, 1. So 7 has to be in one of these two cells. 4 has to be in one of these two. The trouble is there's no markings to help with here. So, 1, 7, 2, 6. These are from 3, 4, 5, 8, 9. 
728. One of these was a five. This has got mismarked at some point. This is eight or nine. That was part of a 689 triple. Okay. So five is used there along with seven, two, and eight. Now, do I have to? Okay, let's think about this one. I don't really want to. But anyway, if it's non primes, it's a six, eight pair because that's all that's left. If it's primes, we're picking two out of one, two, five, seven that have to just add up to a composite number. And there's a lot of combinations there, I would think. So I'm stuck again. I did some work on this cage, but I really didn't get very far. That can't be a one. Okay, let's look at these final columns. They might have a bit more than I'm realizing in. Um, whatever the other digit here out of one, three, five, that's not a one is. Oh, it, ah. No, I was thinking it might be a three, I don't know. Four's in one of those two, that's not very interesting. One there, six is in one of these. Hmm, don't quite know how to progress now. Probably I need to think about this conjunction. We've got a two in one of those, a seven in one of those. Or is it the whisper bits that are left over? Because we couldn't have this be a three eight pair. No, I don't think that helps. We need a nine in one of those cells. Not very exciting, but Sudoku says it's mandatory. Now, I'm a bit stuck now. One, seven, two, we've got a six in one of those. Oh, this was exciting. Now, let me just check these. Two, seven, or three, seven. They add up to nine or ten. They're fine as totals. This, this cage? How can that help me? That digit can't be seven, two, eight, five, or four. So it's one, three, six, or nine. But this one can be anything, virtually. Now, how are we putting those together? So if they were non-prime, they'd have to add up to a prime number, and we would need the nine. So this can't be a six anymore. Nine, six is 15, that's no good. Nine, eight is 17, that is okay. Okay, if it's not a nine, eight pair, then it's two prime numbers, including one, remember. Ah, I don't know what to do. Have I, I feel like I might have missed a cage somewhere. If that was three, five, seven. Oh, well these can't contain one, two or seven. So if they're prime, they are definitely three and five. Well, that's quite interesting. Because then these definitely contain nine and six. And this would have to be seven or eight in that circumstance. If these are not prime, then this is a three, five, seven set. And this would have to be six or eight. So this cell has come down to six, seven or eight. Now, is that tricky? Six, seven is the only prime one there. Seven could go with one, or two, or three, or five here. They're all legal. Six, though, well, if this is six or eight, it has to go with another non-prime, which has to be the other one of six or eight because of this. In fact, four, nine, and eight all look at, look at this cell. So that can't be six. It could be eight there with a six here. 
or it could be 7 with a prime number. Now if I could just rule out 8 there and 6 there, we'd be away. Wouldn't we? Or no, actually maybe it would be better to rule out the other thing. But anyway, 7 in this column is either in this cage, if this is a 357 cage, what's happening to it? Anything? That can't be 3 is all I can see at the moment. If that's 357, that's an 8. Oh, 6 ends up having to be in this cage, and that's not possible. Right. Got it. Okay, so if this is a 357 cage, 6, remember this 6 is looking at that cell. So if that was a 357 cage, that's an 8. 6 is in here, but 6 can't go in here with 4 or 9 because they add up to composite numbers. So this is not a 357 cage. So this is a cage made up of the non-primes, starting with a 9 at the top and including a 6 down below. This is a 3-5 pair, because neither of the cells can be 7 or 2 or 1. And this is an... Well, it's whatever's missing from here, 4 or 8 or 7. It can't be 7, so it's 4 or 8, and 7 in the column now has to be here. And that's now not a 6, that's 1, 2, 3 or 5. Wow, in this box, we've, we've pencil marked 7, so we can place it, and then 2. That's now not a 9, so it's prime, and so is the one below it. And it's also part of a 1, 3, 5 triple, and that's a 6. Um, wow, I mean, that was quite complicated, actually. It's quite clever. That can't be a 2 by Sudoku anymore. This one can be anything in the cage. We've almost finished with the cages. I haven't really considered the totals there or anything about this, but that's weird. We've suddenly jumped to a position where we know a lot. Right, nine sees that cell, that's eight. This can't be four on the whisper now, so that's three. Now eight's not there, it's there. This is a five by Sudoku, that's a four, six pair. That's not a 5. 7, 4, 6, 5, 2, 8. These are from 1, 3, 9, forming a triple with that. Yeah, there's no 3 there. That's a 4, 5 pair. Okay. Um, we're going to have to consider this one soon. I'm just not quite doing it yet, I admit. Ah, oh, there's a 6 in one of those and a 6 in one of those. That is an X-wing on 6s. Six, 6 can't be here. So 6 in the bottom row is placed. Now this can't contain non-primes, because 9, 4, 6 are all outside it. So it's made up of primes. 1, 2, 5, and 7 are their candidates, and they add to a composite number. 4, 5, now. It looks like there's only one place for 8 in this column, if I'm right. It's there. Then, can we do anything else with sort of doubles, triples, or something? Not sure. That means 8 is in one of these cells. Oh, I thought that was going to give me something. Didn't really. Um, I can see we're on the trail now. 8's in one of those. I'm prepared to pencil mark this box to death. 7 is in one of those. Six, four, nine, eight, seven. Well, my juice has run out there. Nine is in one of those. How about that? One, seven, two, three. Six is in one of those. Another X wing on sixes. Not sure. Sorry about the scaffolders' noise outside. Nothing I can do about that today, sadly. It is generally the scaffolding coming down, which is. Good news for me, but I wish it was all over. Um, anyway, four, five, two, three, seven. Oh, goodness. So there really any cage? I haven't really added these up, but there seem to always be so many possibilities. If that was one, this could be... Well, no, it couldn't be one, two. That can never be a two, actually, because either one, two adds to three, or three, two adds to five. So, 2 in the column is either there. Actually, can this ever be 2? 
two one only if this was seven. Two one and two five are illegal because they add up to primes. Two one and two five are the illegal numbers here. That probably matters a lot in the puzzle. Oh, I think I think I'm almost there, but I can't see it. And we're very close to a full breakthrough, I think. Two is in one of those cells. Nine, seven, six, two, eight. I'd like to know whether this is four or eight. Eight, one, three, looking along this row now. Two and seven. I suppose two could be here or here. Ooh. These can't all be... Yeah, they are all. They are all possible composite numbers. That's very annoying. Because if I could take two out of there, I'd have a one, three, five triple, and that would do something. Six, nine, four, seven, eight. I should have kept pencil marking this box to death as planned. What about this cell? It sees one, two, seven, nine, four, six. Nah, three, five, or eight. It's not that exciting after all. Wow, okay, this is weird. There must be some combination down here that's not possible. So, if two's in this, it's a two, seven pair. Then that becomes... Oh, I've got three looking at that cell. Just ordinary Sudoku. Sorry if you've been shouting that. So there's a two gone from there. That's a three, seven pair. Now, that means that's not two. It also means that the only place for two in this column is here. And two, we've just established, can't go with one or five there. So that's a seven. Oh, that's going to be huge. Um, that's not a seven now. Now, there's no pair there that's impossible because they add up to even numbers all the time, so they're fine. But, no, I don't know. These are from 158 now and include an 8. Oh, I'm going to have to read across. 7 has gone out of those two cells. So 7 is definitely up here and up here. 7293. That's not a three. I don't think that does anything either. That's where two is in box eight. And two in box nine is in one of those positions. I wish I knew more than that. Two, nine, seven, eight. Can't rule it out of there. Okay, let's look up this column. Nine two three seven one. One and three must both be in these cells. I'm not going to get anything else out of the whisper. Oh, I completely forgot the rules. Oh, you madman. The amount of times a number is shown on the red line must be a prime number. So, let's look at these cells which are left over. Ones, threes, sevens, and nines. How many ones have we got? One, two, three, four. We can't leave it at four. We need another one. How many sevens have we got? One, two, three. We can't add one to that, so that's a nine. Now, that's going to make a huge difference, and I wish I'd remembered that rule earlier. One, two, three is okay for sevens. One, two, three is okay for nines. One, two, three is okay for eights. One is okay in this puzzle for sixes. Now, what about fours? One is okay. Threes, two is okay. Twos, three is all right. And ones, there are five of them. Wow. Okay, there we go. That was important. So now I put seven in here, seven in here, four in here, eight in here. Good pencil marking. Now, that's not eight. This is eight. And what else did we get? We got a one here. 
So along this row, that's a five. I've got a two, three pair, two, eight, three, four, seven, nine, six. This is one or five. There's a six here, one, three, two, seven, nine. That's a one by Sudoku in the box. Yes, we can do these columns. One, nine, four, nine. There we go. That's good. Now, there must be some read across from that. That's not an eight. Eight, one, three, two, seven, four is in one of those. That's not what I need to see. Two, eight, three. Four, seven. So one is in one of those, but one is definitely in one of those cells. So that has to be the one in box nine. Uh, now five, don't know anything about five. Let's look up this column. We've got the nine, so that's a six. That puts six in the corner, keeps three out of it. That's a five, that's a one, that's a three. It's just Sudoku. So sometimes it is just Sudoku, but other times it's remembering the rules of the puzzle. That's three in the corner. That's three in the spotlight, proving its position. Six and nine, that's a six now. This has to be an eight because it sees a four. So that adds up to 23, that's perfectly legal. Here we go. <laughs> that puzzle has tested me more than it should have. Um, and that's because it was nothing to do with one being prime. It was to do with me not being able to do some simple Sudoku and then forgetting a rule. There we go, though. <laughs> it shouldn't take 31 minutes. Slightly long time for... Well, Chaos is Inevitable was the constructor's name, and that was absolutely true. So I got thrown by various things. And feel free to post comments mocking me for lunacy. That's fine today. We'll see more. We'll do more Sudoku tomorrow. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.